My name is Matt Carlos and we're using DaVinci Resolve and today I'm going to give you guys a no-nonsense tutorial on how to use noise reduction in DaVinci. This is a special request video that somebody asked me about so I figured I would just do this right before I hop into explaining how to add cinematic saturation in the next video. This one's going to be a little bit on the shorter side or maybe not. I don't know. I'm just going to I'm going to try and explain this as quickly as possible. So what is noise reduction? Noise reduction is just blur. Plain and simple. Think of Gaussian Blur from Photoshop, but a little bit more intelligent. It's trying to remove inconsistent pixels in your image because of a loss of data or a or inconsistent information being displayed on your screen because the signal from the light wasn't strong enough for your camera to capture. Because of this, most noise ends up being in the lower end of your footage, near the shadows and the black point. Because where there's an absence of light, there's also an absence of information. So before we start making our manipulations over here, uh, I'm going to explain my little node tree right here. My noise reduction comes first on the way in. Your noise reduction should always work with the cleanest signal that you have available right as it's coming into the editor. Then you can start doing your color grading afterwards. So first I'm going to explain my node tree right here. Sorry, I'm making a little couple adjustments before I get right into this. So we have our noise reduction coming in first. You want to use the cleanest signal coming straight into the software. This is going to be applied before I do anything else to my footage. Of course, I have my color space transform on the way out, but I'm going to be adding a little bit of a curve because Adding some contrast to your footage some, sometimes, or most of the time in my case, working with all different types of footage, does eliminate some noise because it averages out the pixels on the lower end and the high end. When you do add contrast, it tends to hide it a little bit, but the noise is still present. To put it simple, just do your noise reduction on the way in and make sure that it goes before your color grade, and that's all you need to worry about. So now I'm going to explain the types of noise reduction. To put it simple, temporal noise reduction is just going to average out a bunch of frames and then it's going to look for inconsistencies in the noise that's appearing and try to remove just the noise. That sounds really good on paper, but I've never really had good results with it. There's a time and a place for it, but most of the time for people that are just getting into this and people that have been doing this for long enough understand that spatial noise reduction just works better. Like I said earlier, spatial noise reduction is just a fancy way of saying we're blurring out the image with just the noise reduction in mind. Before you use the spatial noise reduction, just understand that the mode, in my personal opinion, set to better is gonna work the best. I think enhanced goes overboard, I think ultra goes way overboard, and I think faster looks terrible. This is totally up to you and your creativity, but I think better works the best. Then we have our radius. This is just gonna be big blur or small blur. That's all you need to know. It's going to blur everything more aggressively when you put large. Now for spatial threshold, the image is split up into luma and chroma channels. If you attack the luma channel, it's only going to look for the noise on a black to white ratio. If you select chroma, it's going to look for colored noise and colored noise usually comes up as green or magenta. And then we have our blending. You can kill off how aggressive the actual effect is using the blend slider right here. Today, I took really bad footage of this microphone po poking out of my camera bag. And this was shot at like, I think 12,800 ISO. And I shot at an aperture of like 10. This is nasty. I wanted to make this, these adjustments as obvious as possible. We're going to zoom into a neutral part of our image and we're going to see it, it looks really grainy and disgusting. And I'm going to pull up on this, on these two sliders. And you're going to see when I'm aggressive with it, it starts removing that texture. Usually I go up until I see the difference between the pixels become less noticeable, but I don't crank this all the way up to the point things look smeared. Just be mindful when you pull the footage into your software that it's better to just nail your exposure in camera because your exposure being correct gives your camera the most information to work with and when you don't correctly expose you're actually gutting yourself and not providing the software a lot of information to work with which is why we get the noise and then when we apply the noise reduction that information is lost when we start applying the blur so now with that out of the way i wanted to tell you guys uh two additional tips as you can see in this image we do have some of the noise reduction kind of poking into the bright points. And what I will typically do is I'll go to the qualifier tab and I'll put this on the luminance option and I'll drag this high soft up a whole bunch and I'll start playing with this sliding this back and forth until it's only really affecting the dark areas and rolling off and not affecting the highlights as much. About right there seems good. And then I have one more trick for you. So I'm going to put another node on this. What's really cool about film grain 
is that film grain, the texture it adds obscures the noise and makes your image just a little bit more sharp. It just plays with our eyes. It's fairly decent. So typically what I'll usually do is I'll go to the 35 millimeter preset. And if I turn this on and off with the opacity at one, you can see that now the image looks less noisy, but the grain is more uniform and you could change the strength of the grain. I'll just go overboard just to show you guys and then change the texture. I'll change the grain strength to add texture to everything. So just about there and then move out. If I play this back, it looks acceptable. This footage is usable now. I'd say it was absolutely terrible before. It looked like a disgusting piece of sandpaper. And now it looks more filmic. Now, just understand, don't ever fix your footage. We, we should be making creative adjustments. And honestly, I always apply noise reduction, but the amount of noise reduction you have to apply is minuscule when you expose properly, as opposed to me putting it at 50% right here. This is overkill. Same thing works with the grain too. If you want to qualify the grain and you want the grain to only apply to the dark areas of your image, you could just set this to luminance, drag the high soft up, like I said before, and just play around with where the grain is really manifesting. And before I go, you guys are probably wondering, wow, Matt, why'd you just tell us not to use temporal noise reduction? Well, honestly, this is my personal bias at work and I did want to follow up on what these two things are again. One more time, temporal noise reduction uses multiple frames. It averages out the inconsistent noise between all those frames. Honestly, it risks ghosting if there's too much motion in your footage. And I find it inconsistent with its application of finding noise, especially with handheld footage like mine. And then we have spatial noise reduction. This works on every single frame that you see in your footage. It smooths the noise based on the surrounding pixels and averages them out. The only issue with this one is that it'll start to blur your fine details if you over use it. And overall, this one is more effective objectively. Also, one more super neat, cool tip I wanted to share with all of you. If you would like to convert this noise reduction into a shared node just by right clicking it and saving this as a shared node, and then you copy paste the grade to another clip, this shared node now when you disable it, hitting control D on your keyboard will save your PC some some processing power. Because if you disable this node, it, it disables it amongst all the clips that this same exact color grade belongs to. I'll be doing a separate tutorial on types of nodes in the future. Just understand that this is like my way of getting around basically having to enable and re-enable the noise reduction on all my clips. I will handle this upstream really fast and then disable it and then do the rest of my work. And then before I'm ready to actually export, I'll turn this back on. But anyways, guys, I think that does it. Oh, and don't forget, guys, go in the comments, make specific requests. Let me know what I didn't include, if there's anything I didn't include. Give me any feedback you want, and I will see you guys later.